Hi and welcome to our next video in the indices series. Uh, we're looking at the first index law now, which is multiplying uh, indices. So we'll get started. Our learning intentions for this video that we want to we want to be able to prove that this law um, and how how it comes about. We want to apply this index law to uh, multiplications involving indices with the same base, <coughs> excuse me, and different bases. We want to understand some terms when it comes to mathematics, which is pronumeral and coefficient, and I'll talk about those. And we want to simplify multiplications of indices with pronumerals um, as the base. So we'll start to have a look at those. One of the main rules as we go through this is that we only apply the index laws to numbers that have the same base. So you can see here, we've actually got 3 squared times 3 to the power of 3. When we're actually applying these laws, these bases have to be the same. Something like 3 to the power of 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 3, we wouldn't be able to apply the laws to that. We can still calculate it because we've got numbers, but we can't actually use the laws to actually um, to simplify that and make it a little bit easier for us. So um, we'll just keep that in mind. All right, let's see if we can see a pattern. All right. Let's discover this pattern. So we've got 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 3. What we're going to now do, so we've got the same bases. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand these out. So let's have a look at what we get. We get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 2 to the power of 4. And we're multiplying that by 2 to the power of 3. So that's 2 times 2 times 2. So the first bit was 2 to the power of 4. And the second bit, 2 to the power of 3. Okay, now that we've got it in the expanded form, how can we actually convert that back into index form? Well, all we do is we add the number of twos in the multiplication chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that actually equals 2 to the power of 7. All right, I'm going to leave that there. Let's see if you can see what the pattern might start to be. All right, next one we're going to calculate 3 to the power of 3 times 3. All right, well, let's just understand that if we've got a base and the bases are the same and there's no index there, we're going to assume that that's actually index index of 1. So any number without an index just by itself is a power of 1. Okay, so let's do the same thing. 3 to the power of 3 equals 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, that's our 3 to the power of 3. And we're multiplying that by 3, just the one 3. So now when we actually expand, uh, after we expand it, we're going to simplify it. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got 3 to the power of 4. Can we see a pattern? Can you see a pattern? I reckon I can see a pattern. If we have a look at these, these two numbers, the indices, how are we getting these two numbers and then ending up with that number. Well, it's pretty simple. We're just adding them together. So we're actually adding, when we've got the same bases and we're multiplying, we just add the indices together. So in this case, we added 4 plus 3. Now, how I would probably write that, and we'll show that in the examples, is we'll actually show the 4 plus 3 in our calculation. All right, so this is what the law is. And I've used A just to represent um, uh, it could be any number, it could be any, any letter. So a to the m multiplied by a to the n actually equals a to the m plus n. So the indices, we're actually adding those indices there. So we actually add those. We keep the base the same and we add the indices. So when we multiply numbers in index form with the same base, we keep the base, that's the first thing, and then we add the indices. All right, let's do some examples. 5 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 3. <clears throat> we've shown that it's the index law, or well, we've proved it with those examples. So um, let's have a look now at, um, let's have a look at this first example. Okay, 5 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 3. Okay, so that actually equals 5. And now I'm going to write the powers up here to the power of 5 plus 3. So that actually equals 5 to the power of 8. Really, really simple way of doing it. What we've got here is we've got 4 to the power of 3 times 4 to the power of 7. So that equals 4 to the power of 3 plus 7. And that actually equals 
4 to the power of 10. Now with these two examples, we can actually evaluate these. Now if I wanted to get my calculator out, I could actually evaluate these and get a really, really large number. So we can actually, if we're asked to um, find the basic numeral of that, we can do that. Now let's have a look at the next one. What we've got here are letters. Okay, These are what we call pronumerals. Okay, so I, I talked about that in our learning intention. Basically, when we actually represent an unknown number or any sort of number as a letter, we actually call them pronumerals. And in our next example, what we're actually going to see is we're actually going to see something called a coefficient, which is basically a number that sits next to the um, sits next to the pronumeral, which tells us how many lots of that pronumeral there are. So um, that's just a little example, but let's just use our um, index law one. So we've got a. Now, we don't have a power there, an index there, so what do we know? It's to the power of 1. So a to the power of 1 times a to the power of 8. So we've got a as the base, and we've got 1 plus 8 as the index. So that actually equals a to the power of 9. All right, let's have a look at our next example. 7 squared times 6 squared. All right, now we first check, do we have the same base as no? Or are we stuck? Can we do any more? Well, basically, no, we can't. This basically cannot be simplified. So the only way we can answer this is if we actually multiply these out, and we'd have 49 times 36, and that answer would give us 1,764. So that's the only way we can actually um, answer that, or we would just keep it in that simplest form there. All right, now what we've got in our next example is 3 n squared times 4 n to the power of 4. Now, in mathematics, if there is no sign between a coefficient and a pronumeral, it actually resembles, uh, actually means that there's a, it's a multiplication. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to expand this out so we can actually see what it looks like. So it's actually 3 times n squared times now here we've got 4 times n to the power of 4. Now what we can actually see here is we actually have numbers that we can multiply together. So we can actually like it. We'll put them together as, as like terms, if you want to call that. And we've also got the, the power of or the base n together. So what I'll do here is I'll actually put the 3 times 4 at the front. And then I'll multiply that by n squared multiplied by n to the power of 4. Okay, so that's now, I'm just going to calculate that, which is 12. And then we've got times n, now it's 2. And then we've n squared times n to the power of 4. So using index law 1, it's 2 plus 4. That equals 12 times n to the power of 6. Now in algebra, or in mathematics, but we're, this is similar to algebra, we'll actually remove that multiplication. And we'll actually just bring the coefficient and the pronumeral together, and we'll just write that 12n to the power of 6. All right, in this example here, let's have a look. We've actually got different pronumerals together now. So what we can actually do is we can actually, with this one, we're actually going to rewrite that in expanded form. e to the power of 6 times c to the power of 6. Excuse me. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the two the two bases or the like bases together. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have b to the power of 3 times b to the power of 6 multiplied by c to the power of 5 times c to the power of 6. And what we can then do, if we have a look at that, is we can actually now use our index law 1. So b to the power of 3 plus 6 multiplied by c to the power of 5 plus 6. So that actually equals b to the 9 times c to the 11. Now, remember what I did back here. Remove the multiplication. You can do the same with pronumerals as we did up here. So that actually equals b to the 9, c to the 11. Oops, c to the 11. I'll rewrite that better for you guys. c to the power of 11. And that's how we'll actually end up writing that. Okay, so there's all our examples 
for multiplying indices. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time with the next index law.